Hi, welcome to the How Do I video series on Microsoft Dynamics NFV 2013 R2. My name is Mark Brummel and I'm an MVP for Microsoft Dynamics NFV. I will be presenting how do I read and understand the posting routines in Microsoft Dynamics NFV 2013 R2. This video is made in collaboration with Platan, a Microsoft Dynamics Learning Center from Belgium, and Microsoft. At the end of this video you will have an idea on how to read and understand the posting routines in Microsoft Dynamics NFV 2013 R2. The objective of this video is first look at the application architecture. This is important to understand the design patterns. Then we will talk about posting versus archiving and processing. At the end of this video we will look add some posting routines in the application and create an example posting routine ourselves. Design patterns are common solutions or best practices to solve problems. This is a well-known concept in computer programming and can therefore be applied to Dynamics NAV as well. This video is part of a series around design patterns in Dynamics NAV and during this video I will reference to other patterns and videos. In this video we will be going through four easy steps. The first step we will look at the general application architecture to see how posting processes flow through the application. In step 2 we will briefly touch on journals and entries. And in step 3 we will, di we will discuss the difference between posting, processing and archiving and explain how to decide to use, to use which design pattern. In the last step we will deep dive into the design of a posting routine in Dynamics NAV and we will look at an example posting routine we will design from scratch. Let's start with the application architecture of Microsoft Dynamics NAV. If we look at the general architecture we can see that Microsoft Dynamics NAV has several modules that coexist and communicate with each other, although it's not required to use the entire application. Each part of the application has one or more ar architectural patterns that match the way people use the software in business processes. Within the application we find your vertical solution that is also designed to work together using the best design patterns for the job. Another way of looking at the application is by putting it into a layered model. At the bottom of the model we find the entry and detailed entry tables that contain historic information which are linked to the second layer where the master data exists. Examples of this master data are GL accounts, customers, resources and fixed assets. The entries are created using journals, which is our third layer. The fourth layer is a document layer. This layer represents the classical paper documents that flow through your company, such as sales orders, shipping documents, picking lists and invoices. The last layer are the larger processes in your organizations, such as long-running jobs, manufacturing processes or customer relationship management. This video will explain how they are designed in Microsoft Dynamics NAV and how they feed the posting process. Within the, this layered approach there are a number of building blocks we can use such as architectural patterns, design patterns, implementation patterns and APIs. This video we will, will explain the architectural patterns of Microsoft Dynamics NAV. There are a number of architectural patterns in the application such as single setup, master data, journals, documents and processes. Posting, archiving and processing happens in the last three blocks. When the posting is done, it is important to understand how to find the data that is generated by the system. 
In Microsoft Dynamics NAV, all data is related back to master data. And using the Navigate API, we can trail back on what happened during the posting process and what were the original origin of the historical data. Let's have a quick look at the journals and entries in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. In the How Do I video series around design patterns there is another video dedicated to journal and entries. Journals are used to create the entries in the database. Although possible it is not recommended to ever create entries without using a journal. They can be used directly from the user interface by end users, for example to do physical inventory, or they are used indirectly by the posting routines or in processes. The journals are layered. If the job journal needs to create an item ledger entry, it calls the item journal line. And if the item journal wants to post inventory value, it calls the general journal line. Let's keep this in mind while we move to the next step. When processing data in Microsoft Dynamics NAV, there are three design patterns that can be used. The most commonly known is posting. We know this from sales and purchase documents. In a posting post process, entries are created and historical documents are generated that thereafter never change. Sometimes the original document is deleted during this process. In processing, the original data is not removed. During the process, the system might create entries or documents. Examples of processes are production orders and jobs. The last pattern is archiving. This is where a one-to-one -one copy is generated from the original document, in order not to lose data if the original document is deleted. Archiving is very limited in Dynamics NAV and only exists for sales and purchase documents. Let's have a look at sales posting in Dynamics NAV. From the original document, the system create posted documents, such as shipping documents and invoices. Using combined invoicing, these documents can have a many-to-many -many relationship with each other. During the process, entries are created using journals. This way, data integrity is guaranteed. If we look at the manufacturing process in Dynamics NAV, we can see that the production orders are going nowhere. They stay in the same table. During the manufacturing process, several things happen that cause entries to be created or even documents that then again start their own posting process. When finished, the production orders get a status but never leave the table. The same applies for jobs. During a job, we can create many job ledger entries that can be invoiced on multiple documents, but a job never moves out of the table. The archiving process in Dynamics NAV is very straightforward. A one-to-one -one copy of the document, as is at that moment, is saved to an archive table that matches the document table and contains all fields that we want to keep in history, in case the original documents get deleted or changed. So when to use which pattern? Actually this is very easy. The general rule of thumb is that the document structure in your application should match the physical paper flow in the business process. This guarantees that procedures are in place for each step of the process, since within the business process the document moves from one department or person to the next. If this doesn't match, there's probably a mistake in the design of your application. A general misconception when designing an architecture for an application is posting just to post. This originated back when the size of tables were important for searching and filtering. This has changed drastically and even for larger SMBs, Dynamics NAV can keep track of thousands of production or orders or jobs without archiving. If there is a real need for archiving, keep in mind that adding archiving increases the complexity of your architecture. 
users will no longer be able to search for historic data in one single place. The last thing to remember is that in Microsoft Dynamics NAV the posted documents can always be deleted once they are printed. If you design your applications to be dependent on the existence of posted documents, you may find yourself in a situation where data is unexpectedly disappeared. Remember the slogan of NAV is the beauty of simplicity for a reason. In the last step we will dive into the CEL code of a posting routine in Dynamics NAV. All posting routines in Dynamics NAV have the same concept, although it is sometimes hard to recognize. This concept is called test near, test far, do it, clean up. There's no reason to start a posting process and halfway found out that the field that is required is invalid, or maybe delete some data at the start and have SQL restore the delete statement in case of a rollback. Let's have a look at this in Dynamics NAV. If we filter on posting routines in the list of code units in the Object Designer, we can see that the number of posting routines in the application is very limited and most of the posting routines are related to journals. Most things that happen in Dynamics NAV are processes which do not have posting routines and it is unlikely that it is required to create many posting routines in vertical application. Let's open code unit 80. If we look at the first few blocks it is relatively easy to recognize the test near and the test far. Once they are passed we know that we are good to go and we should not expect basic errors during the rest of the process. The next steps in the code unit are creating the posted documents. This is a very straightforward process without much business logic. The next step is processing the lines, where we can see that the system is still testing values from the source table. But remember, we have not started, started the posting process to the journals yet. In this part, the system generates journal lines based on the type of the sales line. Let's look at creating the resource. Please note that posting processes never call business logic inside journals using validate commands. The posting routine should be well designed so all errors are trapped before posting to the journals. The business logic inside the journal lines are meant for checking manual entries by users using the journals from the UI. In this part of the posting routine, the customer entries and the VAT entries are created. If we look close at the code, we can see that a journal line is never physically inserted into the database. It only serves as a contract for the journal post line routine. This avoids unnecessary traffic to the database, locking and keeps the code nice and clean. When used as a contract, we also never specify the template and batch names. The last steps in this code unit are updating some fields in the document or deleting the document if required. The sales post code unit also maintains interfaces to application areas such as warehousing and assembly management, but this is out of the scope of this video. Since the sales post code unit is a really large code unit and even for experienced developers hard to understand. 
let's go to our example application and see how a posting code unit from scratch could look like. In our example application we have an example document table that contains a number of fields that are typical for documents and when posting the document we can choose to create a song or a dance or a song and a dance which are our posted documents and while posting this document we will also create an example journal entry. Let's look at the design of the code unit. In this code unit we have implemented a concept called atomic coding. This concept means that the structure of our code is easy to read and consists of a number of functions which are, which are written in workflow style that allow us to see what the function does by only reading the name. In this code unit we can therefore clearly see that after checking if the end user has made a selection we execute we execute a test near and a test far. The test near function tests if the example number and the posting date are populated and the test far function tests if the posting date is within my range of allowed posting dates. Then I replace the dates if it's required to be changed during best post and then I create the posted documents for songs and dances and when that has been done I post the example journal line. Let's look at posting the example journal line. Here we can see in a simple example that we use the journal line as a contract and without actually inserting the data we are calling the post line code unit with the example contract. And in the last step of this code unit we delete the example document. In this video we have learned how to read and understand the posting routines in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. When to decide to create a posting routine and how to design your own posting routine. Thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in another episode of the How Do I Video series for design patterns on Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 R2.